So okay, we're going to take our patient who's now been established um, endoscopically intubated viral filter on a bag valve mask and transition them over to the Oxylog. So to do that, we're going to put the Oxylog into the oxygen supply. And to do that, you just press here hard until you hear a click. To take it out, you rotate it and it comes out. It can pop out if you don't hold on to it. So we click that in and then we set up our Oxylog. Now what I was saying earlier was that the expiratory gas from the patient will come out here and be vented to air just like it is on the bag valve mask here. So it's absolutely critical that we hook the uh, Oxylog tubing up on away, the, the away from the patient um, on the viral filter. Um, so that would be here. Um, so now we'll turn the Oxylog on, we'll presume it's been checked and it will come on. You would click this button to go into check mode and it will come on with some basic settings, okay? Now just so this isn't blowing up, this isn't aerosolizing anything, it's not been connected to the patient. Fresh set of tubing each time. We're just gonna hook this up to our patient um, and make it all nice and secure. Make sure once more that these settings, these connections are all secure. That's great, we're gonna come back to our ventilator. Now, the patients um, with COVID-19, obviously they're going to be hypoxemic and we're, go we're going to presume that if they've um, needed to be ventilated that they're going to have ARDS. And so that means that we want to reduce the possibility of making their lungs worse by blowing them on a ventilator. And so that means we need to regulate the peak pressures that we give them and also the uh, tidal volumes that we give them. Um, so we treat this as per the ARDSnet protocol, which means that we shoot for between six to eight mils per kilo of ideal body weight. That's based on the patient's height, but broadly for an average adult male, you're probably looking at about 450 mils of tidal volume. For a female, probably 380 to 400 mils of tidal volume. An inspiratory, a respiratory rate to start with, one might look at 18 to 20 breaths a minute as a reasonable place to start. And I would suggest that if these patients are profoundly hypoxemic, the PEEP um, should be set to 10 to start with rather than what the ventilator will default to, which is five. In terms of IE ratio, that's the ratio of inspiratory to expiratory um, uh, portioning on the respiratory cycle, the Oxylog 3000 defaults to 1 to 1.5, and I think that's reasonable. It's not as good as an ICU ventilator, but it's pretty good. Most of these patients won't have expiratory flow limitations, so COPD type uh, morphology on their um, uh, respiratory physiology, so um, prolonging the inspiratory phase beyond uh, one to two is reasonable. Um, so in order to change this peep from five to 10, we twiddle the knob here and go up to 10 and click that, okay? In terms of changing the tidal volume, we're not gonna go through knobology, but it's worth noting that the peak pressure limit here um, is something that is a limit. It's not an alarm. Um, and so if the ventilator is trying to deliver a tidal volume and it on its way to delivering it hits the pressure limit, it will immediately cycle to expiration. And this will mean that the patient will get less volume than you would like them to get. So for the purposes of transfer, what I recommend is that you push the pressure limit out of the way of where it is reasonable that the patient will need ventilating. So you probably know that for ARDSnet ventilation purposes, we want the peak or plateau pressures to be 30 or less. So I think if we set this alarm to 40, that gives a little bit of leeway for the transfer. Um, remember that those peak pressures are something we don't want to maintain for a very long period of time, but probably in amongst the transfer, rather than the ventilator alarming all of the time because it's hitting that 30, I would set it up out of the way at 40 so that you can uh, ventilate with a little bit of uh, roughness around that peak pressure of 30. And so I think if we set, so when we twiddle this knob, it gives you a rough idea, but actually the numbers down here will tell you um, what uh, tidal volume you're achieving. And I think one thing is also worth noting is as you change the respiratory rate, so the IE ratio will stay the same and the inspiratory time will shorten or lengthen um, depending on that. It'll also tell you the gas consumption here. So looking at that 460 litres of oxygen that's in the CD cylinder, you're running here at 100% oxygen at 13.2 litres per minute. It's also worth saying that if you've had a patient who's been just about holding their own on a non-rebreather mask, that's probably a fraction of inspired oxygen of 80%. And you can usually 
bring that down post intubation to around about 60% um, post intubation. Of course your patient may be an extremist and things may be different in an individual basis. The WHO guidance is that once the patient is stable to shoot for oxygen saturations of over 90 but in the initial phase shoot for 94 and above. Blood gas analysis is nice but not essential. I think if we're protectingly, protectively ventilating the patient, I'm not so worried about the carbon dioxide level. Um, and so blood gas analysis, while it's nice to have, is not critical. What you can do is just gently reduce the oxygen uh, fraction down to getting those sats um, if you've got time and are able to do that. Otherwise, starting at 60 for a patient who was not crashing prior to intubation would seem reasonable.